Minasan konnichiwa, this is Tina and welcome back to my channel. We are back with another round of Hits and Misses! Should that be my new, um, you know, like jingle for my Hits and Misses? Just kidding. In this video, I will be sharing my skincare Hits and Misses for the month of June. If that sounds like your thing, then please go ahead and turn on the notification Alrighty, starting off with some SPF, I do have the By Wish Trend UV Defense Moist Cream. So I actually have already reviewed this one over on Instagram, so some of you guys may have seen it over there, but I did see some of you wanting a more kind of in-depth review over here on YouTube, so I was like, why not? I will include it in my hits and misses, and I actually really, really enjoyed this sunscreen. First of all, the gorgeous bright orange packaging. As soon as I saw it, like the box itself as well, like it came in this bright orange packaging. I was in love. I hadn't seen anything this kind of like neon these days and really, really enjoyed the first kind of visual impact of this one. And I do also like that it is in a airless pump. I know it's kind of hard to tell on camera, but it's one of those airless pumps that really does get every bit of the product out. It is a chemical sunscreen that has SPF 50 plus and PA plus 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 protection and was actually created in collaboration with one of the biggest Korean beauty corporations are more Pacific. They produce some of the biggest brands like Sulwasu, Innisfree, um, Laneige, Etude House, um, and many, many more. So I think it was like a huge feat that By Wish Trend was able to collaborate with them to create this product. They also have straight up come out and said that this sunscreen has been tested and verified in three separate labs to actually give the labeled SPF protection. So if that was ever a doubt for you, don't worry, you're covered. When I initially pumped it out, I was like, oh, she thick. But surprisingly, the creamy texture blends out very very easily and it doesn't leave any Y cast. Prior to launch they actually described it as a skin gripping texture which I honestly had no idea what that meant but after I used it myself for a while I got it. It's like it feels every bump and crevice on the surface of your skin to give that even film of protection and it's one of the few sunscreens that when I wear it I really do feel fully protected. Personally, I would definitely recommend it more to those who have normal to drier skin since it is a very nourishing texture and has a dewy finish. I have been enjoying it even in these colder, um, drier months in Australia right now. Although I did read some reviews that even people with oilier skin said they enjoyed it because it's not greasy. Like it's nourishing, but doesn't feel greasy on the skin. So from me feeling it, I would say it seems too rich for oily people, but it probably doesn't does depend on each person. So if you are looking for something that has high protection, nourishing to the skin, um, has that kind of nice dewy finish, I definitely recommend this sunscreen and it is for sure a hit for me. It is also fragrance and essential oil free. So next I do have two moisturizers. First, the COSRX Propolis Light Cream. Light Cream? Light Cream. Propolis Light Cream. Cream? Cosar X Propolis Light Cream. <laughs> Why do I always do that? Cosar X Propolis Light Cream. Fuck. <laughs> Next, I do have two moisturizers. The first one is the Cosar X Propolis Light Cream. So I opened this one along with the By Wish Trend cream around the same time because they seemed really similar in terms of like the concept, the packaging, the ingredients. And well, I guess there is a lot in the comment. I know the whole Propolis line from COSRX is super popular as it should be since Propolis does have so many skincare benefits for all skin types. First, it is antibacterial and anti-inflammatory, so it really does work well for acne prone skin and also helps to speed up the wound healing process. It is rich in antioxidants, which is great for well aging and also can be nourishing for dry skin. It is definitely a light texture, although I would still call it kind of like a medium bodied cream. And the key ingredient is their Full Fit Pro Complex, which contains propolis extract, honey, and royal jelly. 
Other than that, I would say there are not too many notable ingredients, although we do have um, glycerin and allantoin in there as well. Before rating it, I'm actually going to do a quick intro on the by Wish Trend one so we can do like a proper comparison. So this one is the By Wish Trend Pro Biome Balance Cream. Like the COSRX, this one also does have propolis extract as one of the key ingredients, although the first and highest percentage ingredient is actually Lactobacillus ferment lysate, which is a probiotic that can help strengthen the skin barrier as well as enhance overall skin health. Along with this ingredient, there's actually three other fermented ingredients like Bifida as well as honey ferment filtrate. I personally love fermented ingredients. I just feel like they have worked so well for my skin personally. So that part of it definitely had me more intrigued. The texture is definitely more lightweight compared to the COSRX and this one I would describe as a gel cream formula. For me personally the COSRX is more nourishing whereas the BiWish Trend is more hydrating. The COSRX feels like it sinks into the skin more and feels really comfortable whereas the by wish trend is really kind of firming and plumping to the skin in the actual jar there's not much of a scent to either of them although when applying it I definitely feel like the by wish trend has more of that um, propolis smell as someone with drier skin the texture feel and user experience of the COSRX one is more to my liking although speaking from ingredients I feel like the by wish trend one would have more long-term benefits. If I were to make it super simple, I would say normal to dry skin, go for the COSRX. The oily to combo skin, go for the By Wish Trend. I would say right now in summer, if you're in a hotter, humid climate, the By Wish Trend is probably more comfortable and lightweight on the skin. I'd say they're both a hit for me since they are not just a plain old moisturizer, but they're also not too intimidating or active feel. So they can be used by anyone and I would say they are great for teenagers. Next I have the Corsair Softimo Honey Mild Cleansing Foam. Yee! this packaging. I'm not even gonna lie, I 1000% bought it because of this packaging. It's not always this packaging, but if there is one thing Japan is really, really good at is getting you to buy products that have cute limited edition packaging. <laughs> Although I was still intrigued by the type of product that this is. So it is a self foaming type of cleanser. So you would think it is a face wash or like a second step water-based cleanser, but it is actually a makeup removing cleanser. It does say on the back for light base makeup. So you can't expect it to remove like your long lasting lipstick or your waterproof eye makeup. But I thought it would be perfect on those days where you're wearing like a BB cream, tinted SPF or like layers of sunscreen where it sometimes feels like a little too much to double cleanse but not quite enough to do just a water-based cleanser. And that is exactly the situation when I have been using this one. I have been leaving it like in the shower mainly and on days where I don't wear makeup and have just reapplied sunscreen a couple of times, I will go in the shower, wet my face and then pump a few pumps of this one and then use it to cleanse my face. It is a nice light foam that smells divine. They actually describe it as citrus honey. It is oh so sweet and I love it. If you are someone who is sensitive to fragrance, you're probably going to hate it, but I love sweet fragrances. So I am all about this one. As for the actual product performance, it does the job. I feel like it does remove the layers of sunscreen and excess sebum that I have built up throughout the day. Although it does say that it has a nourishing feeling after washing, which I do not necessarily feel. And it might be because of my drier skin. For me, the product concept is a hit, but the actual product is probably a miss. As in, I love the idea of it, but I need someone to make it better. Next, I do have the I'm from Beat Refresh Pack. So a few hits and misses ago, I actually described um, the So Good Feel So Calm toner pads as the softest toner pads I have ever felt. I am sorry, Sue, but these have taken over that spot. I mean, they are two completely different toner pads and I still absolutely love the Sue Good ones. 
but these ones are just ridiculously soft. So the key ingredient is beets or beetroot as we call them here in Australia, but they are said to be high in all sorts of vitamins, anthocyanin that makes dull skin clear and smooth, as well as beta carotene that calms and soothes sensitive and irritated skin. These pads are also so hydrating. Like, I don't know if you can see it from there, but there is this juice coming out. There is so much juice in this container. I do like to pop a pad on each cheek and leave it there for a while since they actually stick really well to the skin too. And they just feel so, so nice. I also feel like it feels out that much needed hydration in my skin. So I try to focus it on those areas on my cheeks where my pores are most noticeable. And after a couple of minutes when I remove it, I feel like they do feel kind of more blurred and filled out with hydration. So my pores look less noticeable. After a few minutes, I wipe the pads across my face. And honestly, two is more than enough. If you are literally just using it to wipe on your face, like one is still plenty and there's just so much of that essence soaked into the pads. As they are super soft, they don't provide much of an exfoliating effect. So if you do use your toner pads to kind of have that additional exfoliation, these ones might not be for you. But for me, they were a hit and a really quick and easy way to get hydration back into my skin. They also do come with a set of tweezers on the top of the lid here, which is super convenient. Although I lost mine like pretty much as soon as I started using them. So yeah. And the last product we have is the House of Doa White Rice Wash Off Mask. Just kidding. <laughs> when I showed it on my Instagram, so many of you said that it looked like a juice or kind of like a jelly snack or something. And it totally does, but I love the packaging. I think it's very different, um, innovative, and yeah, I don't know. I think it's a really, really cute. House of Dola is a new brand for me, although I did really like their kind of brand concept as their mission is to reintroduce Korea's traditional skincare methods to the world, which I think is super, super cool. I've said it in the past many times already, but rice is one of my favorite skincare ingredients to help achieve that smoother, brighter skin. And it has been used in Asian skincare for literally eons. I mean, back in the day, people used to just um, wash their face with rice water for skincare. Like that's all they did. This one is a wash off mask that helps to moisturize and brighten skin as well as gently exfoliate. And when I say gently, I mean gently. This is one of the creamiest, softest rice masks that I have ever used. I've actually tried quite a few. I was thinking the other day and I'm pretty sure I've tried like four rice wash off masks before. And this one is for sure the smoothest, creamiest, softest one I have used. It goes on soft and even when massaging, it is really, really gentle. That being said, make sure you don't apply too much pressure when you are massaging it on your face. After 10 minutes, I wash it off and it does make my skin feel very smooth. There's no other way to describe it, just really silky smooth without any of that tightness. It is definitely a nice pick-me-up when you don't want to go for a harsh exfoliant. They have two other wash-off masks in their range, which I am yet to try out, but I am very curious, especially the mung bean one. There's this green mung bean one, which I'm like, mm, what is that? But if you did enjoy this hits and misses video, please um, check out the last two that I did. It's always a super fun way to talk about products that I feel like don't have a place in other videos and kind of more of a first impressions on a product that I've used for a short while. So please check out me other, check out me other videos and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. <laughs>